here we go then. The first of these videos um, are going to be showing you how to make rounds one to three of this beautiful flower purse. This is rounds one to three here completed. And we're gonna be working um, with pale pink, orange and lemon. As we're making uh, a front and a back of the purse, we're gonna need to make each piece twice. And it's I suggest you um, do them at the same time, so work both of them up to round three, for example, at the end of these videos, just because um, tension can change a little as you work them. And I don't know, they, they just seem to work up more evenly if you work each round on each piece at the same time, rather than doing one complete side and then doing the other side. So little tip, that's how I've worked mine. Right, here we go then with round one, pale pink and um, our first round, so off we go. Okay, when we're working in the round, we need to start with a, a, a loop or a ring of some sort to, to actually crochet into. And um, Greta asks us to do that with the method of making five chains and joining the chains with a slip stitch. So we'll do it that way. Here's a little tip though that Amanda gave to me. When you make your slip knot to start your chains, ordinarily I make my slip knot like this and I, put, I use the long end, the working end of the yarn, I pull that through, so I have to pull that end to tighten the knot. That tends to leave things a little bit lumpy and untidy and through magic, I assume, or science that I can't explain, if you do it the other way, so if you use the short end of the yarn to make the knot, you can tighten it a lot more and it makes things an awful lot neater. Let's try it that way, shall we? With Amanda's special method. It's um, much, I would urge you to actually test this because it's easier to, um, to see the difference when you make it yourself. It's not so easy to see on camera, particularly when it's quite a small hook and a small yarn. But um, do that, trust me on this, it works really well. So five chains, that's one, two, three, four, Five. and don't pull the end just yet because we're going to join the chain into the round with a slip stitch. Now give it a little pull, give it a little pull now that end and it tightens everything up a treat, tightens the knot up and makes everything look a lot neater, it's tremendous. Right. So our first round is very, very straightforward. It's actually 14 trebles into the ring. Um, our first treble is actually gonna be a substitute treble made up with three chains, so let's do that. One, two, three, and now 13 trebles into the ring. And it's a good time to remind you that we are working in, yes, that's right, UK terms. Two. Now I'm not going to make you watch all of this, but I'm going to take a moment to tell you that if you prefer to start your round with a magic loop, that's absolutely fine. I usually start mine that way. And if all has gone to plan, there should be a little video um, on the main part of our YouTube to show you how to do that. Right, here we are, finished. Um, Greta has got a really lovely method for joining the rounds and um, I'm just gonna show you that right now. Uh, you're going to slip stitch like you usually do when you, when you join in a round, so you just um, pass your hook under, pull the yarn through, snip the yarn that through and you're going to actually pull the yarn from the front to the back so you're going to kind of put your hook in that way and just pull that yarn through and um, sew your end in and then that is a very neat method of part of um, fastening off. Again I'm 
if all goes to plan there should be a little video on the main part of our YouTube channel showing you how to do um, a needle join that's also a nice way to fasten off so if you would prefer to try that please go and give it a look but I'm really rather rather happy with this way okay so that is round one